Hello everyone, this is Singy from the Sanctum of the Soul and today I've got with me the Fantasy Cats Oracle. Um, this is of course by Los Carabello. Um, so the box is your typical um, mid-sized Los Carabello Oracle box as you can see. Um, so it's going to fit perfectly into your collection of Los Carabello decks. Um, and I have taken the liberty of removing the shrink wrap first, so we don't waste time. And uh, this is of course by Paolo or Paolo Barbieri. Um, <laughs> pardon my Italian, but uh, so he is famous for his work on you know the Barbieri um, zodiac oracle, and of course his calendars like the star dragons and the unicorn calendars. So he is quite well known. And of course, it's Italian. Uh, so I this is my first Barbieri deck uh, because I've never really felt the the draw to any of his other decks. Um, but I thought I'd give it a try because this deck looked adorable. Um, so I had it on pre-order as soon as it was announced. Um, but one thing I'm going to say right from the start is that um, this deck has only got 23 oracle cards and I'm generally not a fan of any deck that's, that has below 32 deck cards. I feel like, especially when they're charging the same as any other deck, um, I feel slightly shortchanged. Um, of course that is a superficial, um, y you know, um, sentiment, but um, I think it's a valid one as well. Uh, I'm sure some people out there will agree with me, um, but anyway, uh, so what's interesting about this box in particular is, so we're probably used to um, the slightly glossy uh, boxes from Los Carpio, Um and I was very impressed by the Santa Muerte one because it was matte and it was slightly embossed and it's got the silver. But this one is completely different. It has, as you can see, almost like a poker card, like a casino standard poker card um, texture to it, which I really enjoy. Um, ignore the slight scuffs. I think that's a glue mark. Anyway, not a big deal. Um, ah. So I thought this deck looked really adorable and let's just get on with it. Uh, so the box is slightly more, well, slightly tighter because of the the the, the texture, and it's your typical black inside, very sturdy. And here we go. So one thing right off the bat that I'm not a fan of is that there is this huge gap um, up here, and that means that your cards are going to rattle around. Um, and so I have taken to having small pieces of paper for, or for example, you know, like a pad and I just leave it in there so just to prevent it from rattling around if you bring this out. Um, but if you don't it, and it's just sitting on your shelf, then of course that is fine. Um, so completely up to preference. And so I enjoy this ribbon. Uh, it seems to be a recent fixture in a lot of Los Carabio decks, so that's great. And your typical guidebook, but this one has images in it apparently. No, it doesn't. Okay, so the images just mark different languages. And of course, this um, already not, not substantial guidebook split between six languages. So you're going to get um about this thick of it will be in english everything else will be irrelevant if you're an english speaker or you know generally it's only about this thickness of the guidebook is relevant to anyone or speak who you know speaks any of these six languages so um i do like the the guidebook because it does say action and advice um, which is quite interesting. Um, well, I'm just loving, 
you know, I'm just generally Los Carpio guidebooks don't um, include that those small details, so I am quite impressed. And it is quite a substantial paragraph for all of them, so that is wonderful. Uh, okay, and on to the cards. Ugh. Okay, so there are scratches on it, as you can see. I hope those are on the shrink wrap, not on the cards themselves. Um, otherwise, the cards look okay. So, yeah, the cards look okay. And it's really thin, which is a, a huge shame. Okay, it is really tight. How do you open this? So um, you can see from the back that there's some kind of fairy with a cat and I think that's adorable. Um, I used to be a fan of, you know, decks with just patterns on the backgrounds, um, on the backs of the cards I mean, but recently I've quite enjoyed a few of this these kind of designs, so it's not just floral or symbolic or some mandala or some sort. Um, so I, I do quite enjoy these. Okay. Yeah, so the scratches were only on the shrink wrap. My goodness. Now on to the cards. So card stock wise, it's what you would expect from Los Carpeels. Um, very generic card stock so I say this on every video in case people are just popping in to watch a single video if you're living in the tropics um, card stock of this type will generally bend in the humidity so uh, do look out for better card stock like for example hay houses um, thick matte cards those will survive the humidity a bit better um, these ones expect them to bend, uh, you know, especially in rainy seasons. Uh, so don't be surprised if they do. It's, it just happens and it's not the publisher's fault, but it just happens. Anyway, so we've got the first card, which is cuddling. We've got a female cat or a Venus cat. And we've got healing okay dreaming I love that the, the colors variation is quite large you've got this dull color and then you've got this vibrant blue followed by a vibrant yellow oh look at that okay so the cards aren't just um, a drab green brown kind of color scheme Dreaming, so beautiful. Okay, knowing, hiding, ruling. Oh, that is. I love the color contrasts. Empowering. So, looking at this color scheme, you will be reminded of some of other, um, Barbieri's other works. And it also reminds me a little of, um, like, Alana Fairchild's Rumi Oracle. Grooming. Ah, this is the card that made me want to buy it. Um, meeting. So cute. Traveling. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting card. Watching. So we're back to drab brown and green. Running. Climbing. Oh, I love. The patterns they're so lifelike oh my goodness okay and we've got sleeping so 
So I like that there, there are other myth mythological creatures that are included. Um, so it's not just cats, but cats and mythological creatures. So that's quite a cute way of um, making a deck, I guess. Enchantment. And, oh, a horror. Okay. So, I'm not a fan of decks that um, mix vertical and horizontal cards. Uh, it's just me because of how um, it's a bit difficult to make a, a spread when some cards are horizontal. It kind of gets in the way of your spreads, um, especially if you're doing it for someone. Uh, so you want to make it presentable, uh, then it can be a problem. But it is a superficial issue. And this is the cover card, Fall, the quiet joy of transition. Oh, oh, okay. So sorry about that. That was a bit hasty on my part. So these seem to be the con, um, well, the context cards. So. You've got the four seasons, you've got the attitudes, so four attitudes and four seasons. So I feel like if you wanted to, you could do three readings with this deck. One uh, for the seasons, one for the attitudes, and then the general advice if you want to. So I might consider that instead of shuffling everything, everything together. So essentially, you've got 15 oracle cards and you've got 8 of these um, like context cards. So Fall, the quiet joy of transition. Summer, the wild energy of midday. So my only issue with this is it doesn't look very wild. Uh, it looks quite tame actually. <laughs> Uh, this doesn't look very quiet. You've got fairies literally dancing. So, winter, the delicate feeling of night. Okay, now this is perfect. You've got the serenity, the you know delicate flowers and all that. Spring. Oh, I love this card. Spring, the fresh yearning of the morning. Oh, I love this card. Okay, and the attitude cards, we've got desiring intimacy. Oh, I love this, it's so urban. Desiring balance. Ooh. Desiring belonging. And desiring, desiring, desiring transformation. Oh, these are great. So let me consult the book in case it says something about how to use the deck. Okay. Possibly. Uh huh. There we go. Right. So it's a. You've got like a quick oracle draw, and you're supposed to do it in separate piles. So you've got the when, how, and what. Right, and you've got the four season draw. Select a single attitude card randomly in case. Mm -hmm. Right, consider the year ahead and each season. Shuffle and randomly select a vertical card for each season. This is what you should focus on and it's your theme for each season. Right. Okay, this is interesting. Right, so you're never supposed to um, shuffle all the cards together, so the horizontal cards are in two separate piles and the vertical parts are in one single pile. So let's just shuffle the vertical cards thoroughly. Oh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. 
So apparently, um, the vertical cards and the horizontal cards, they are all different on the back. So these are the attitude cards, the season cards, and these are your general advice cards. So there is no um, confusion, I guess. Let me just shuffle these. Right, so I feel like doing one of those spreads because just because it sounds fun. <laughs> okay, so we're supposed to deal the. Uh, let me just clear the crystals. Okay, and we've got the seasons. So let's start with winter because that's the next season. Oh, well, it's the current season. And after winter, we've got spring. And we've got summer and fall. So that will symbolize um, my year ahead, apparently. Okay, this is exciting. And um, it's supposed to shuffle the uh, attitude cards and randomly pick one. So um, I don't even remember any of them. So randomly pick one and I'm picking this one and you're not supposed to turn it over. So you're supposed to set it down in the middle. Ah, so beautiful. So after that, um, you're supposed to pull one card per season. So, so winter will be this card. Running. And we've got Huh. Strange. Okay, this one. Mm-hmm. Hot blink. This one. Sleeping. Okay, so because of how few the cards are, it feels a bit flimsy when I shuffle. And this feeling. Okay, so what am I supposed to do with this again? Let's consult the book. Um, okay. Spring season, that's the beginning. Right, so when you are finished examining what to do in each season, turn over your attitude card to discover the attitude you should embrace all year long. So the first one is running. Um, feels like a lot of the heavy lifting will be done in the winter period. So I'm currently doing networking, for example. So um, perhaps that will um, come to fruition later on in the, the year. And we've got, uh, okay, let me just move this so all the cards are visible. And we've got cuddling in spring, so perhaps to slow down or to find a sense of safety, um, to find somewhere where I can belong, I can feel safe to be myself, I can feel protected and stable. Uh, of course, it could mean a relationship, but Spring is just like six months away, so I don't know about that. Well, it's three months away. And then the sleeping in summer. So it feels like you can fi I can finally relax in the summer. Uh, so I'm going to assume that means I have found that stability in uh, spring. And in the fall, there'll be feeling. So that seems interesting as well. Um, Like... Uh huh. Okay, that is interesting. I'm not quite sure how to interpret that. Um, except perhaps, you know, stopping and being able to 
you know, get in touch with what I've done through the year and open the heart, embrace vulnerability. Aha! Okay. Right, so after getting that sense of safety, perhaps to reopen myself, re enter the world, and take new chances again for the following year ahead. So let's reveal the attitude card. Oh, this is exciting. And that is desiring intimacy. So I am supposed to keep closer friendships in the year ahead, um, which actually makes sense considering there's the, in, you know, the cuddling, the sleeping and the running, oh, well, the feeling. So that does make sense. Um, so yeah, there we have it. Um, thanks for watching, I guess. Um, well, I don't know why I'm saying I guess so much today, but yeah, bad habits. So forgive that. Thank you for watching, and I would, well, I, I was a bit leery about it because of the 23 card thing, but considering that there is obviously thought put into it in the attitude cards and the season cards, um, I, I am looking at this deck very favorably now. I think this is a worthwhile investment. This is a fantastic um, deck to use. Uh, for uh, you know a gentler energy as well as being in depth or on its own um, and I plan on using it with um, the spirit car spirit cats oracle as well and you can see how this deck is going to fit right in with that so if you you have this deck um, you know, you, you can consider getting that and if you want to know about this deck, I've got a video up um, where I reviewed that deck as well. So do check that out if you're interested in building your, um, a proper cat themed reading set. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. Um, card stock wise, I am, you know, I am quite pleased with the overall quality. Um, card you know, I am a bit surprised because of bad experiences I've had with the publisher, but it is perfect. It came in perfect condition. The box was a bit scuffed, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so this is my very first pa Paolo Barbieri deck, and I might consider getting some of his other decks in this case because I really enjoy the concept and I really enjoy the artwork. Thank you for watching again and this is Singy from the Sanctum of the Soul. I hope you guys have a great day ahead. Well, you all have a great day ahead. Um, and yeah, goodbye.